we're here at Sunny Fun. First day, a little bit of wind coming up, but another pleasant day. And I'm always attracted to these kinds of aircraft, and in particular, the Quicksilver aircraft. This is a single place, part 103 aircraft, but it's got kind of a different looking power source on here, and that's the subject of our conversation. I'm Dan Johnson talking with Ken Bourne. And Ken, what, what's different here? This is not the 447 Rotax engine that we often see on this Quicksilver. No, so what we're looking at here is a single cylinder, four stroke, water cooled fuel injection carton that was adapted to be used in the powered parachute world. And uh, we've had a lot of interest in four stroke engines, particularly on the single seat aircraft. Reliability being one of the things, and fuel consumption. This engine is only burning 1.2 gallons an hour, which is just sick. Now that's at cruise at the, at the... That's not full power, that's, that's, actually, that's at a cruise but still, RPM. you but get still. this airplane up in the air, once you're climbed up and you're just flying around, 1.2 gallons an hour. 1.2 gallons. That's for how much horsepower? 39.6 horsepower. Uh, so very close enough for government work at 40 horsepower. 40 horsepower. So that's the same as a 447? Same as a 447, that's yeah. right. So what did it take for you to get this on here? Now this is quite a different engine mount than we've ever seen on Quicksilver before. I'm guessing a lot of work and probably by more than one entity. Yeah. Tell me a little bit of the story. So what what we had to do to adapt this to our plane, we're just dealing with the mounting of what you see here to our airplane. Okay, so this tube, this bracket, a couple of others like that, but from here, back is something you're just buying, is that right? That's correct. This this is coming from the, the powered parachute market, oh. the quads made. Oh, okay. The they, they've been into these kind of uh, lower, uh, smaller engines, yeah. but, but four-stroke. So, it, but this engine is not a new engine. This has been around for a while. Okay. And it's tried and true. They've had things. They worked them out. Uh, you know, so we're, we're basically adapting something that's already been proven to use for what we're doing. Um, the, the interest in the four cycle engines is just crazy how much people are wanting to get away from two stroke. It's not just the manufacturers, it's also the customers. Yeah, sure. I, I hear it all the time people asking about a good four stroke. Partly for reliability, difference in noise, and some other things like that, but also in a lot of places, two strokes are becoming persona non grata or engine non grata, I guess I have to say. So, four stroke is going to be more commonly accepted by people. The emissions standards that these engines are adhering by are light years ahead of what the old two stroke is. Yeah. So it's, it's just a it's, a, it's a different approach. Obviously you can see the thrust line is a little lower than what we're used to seeing. Uh, yeah, normally it's right up at your keel. Right. We're, rectangular bar up here called keel usually. We're, we're anticipating the performance of this as far as uh, altitude and uh, attitude from throttle position settings okay. is going to actually be better uh -huh. than having the higher thrust line. Is that right? Our, our center of gravity is actually lower than the wings, so having the thrust line a little lower makes sense. Your vertical center of gravity. Yeah, yeah. Your vertical center of gravity, <laughs> correct. Uh, the installation of these engines is very simple, very, very simple. It. Most people are seeing this for the first time, but some have seen it before. What are they, what are they saying? Well, they're wanting to know how it performs. Sure. And right. we we don't have any time in the air yet with this engine. Uh, probably two days or so after we get back from the show, once the plane is put back together, it's going to be in the air quite a bit. And uh, we're going to we're going to try and get some video footage of that. You know, doing some uh, short takeoffs and landings. Uh, general cruise, see how everything does, climb, stuff like that. We already know what the fuel burn is going to be. Uh, the prop, that's uh, everything was done on paper to figure out what we need for that to achieve the RPM. Okay. This engine's max RPM is around 9200. 9200. 9200. So that's quite a bit higher than what yeah, we're for used to a, And for a four-stroke, that's an unusual number for some people. But this comes from the racing industry, from the, the car world. But these engines, they have a TBO of around 500 hours. Okay. And e even in the kart racing world, that's what they're doing. And they've been around for oh, a yeah, long they're gonna, time. They're going to run them really hard. Right. Okay. And so they, they've been around for a long time, so that's not theoretical, no. Okay. And 500 hours, you know, most pilots are aware. 
what is that? That's 10 years of flying for someone that's fairly active. Right? That's right. Much less most of us who probably don't get that many hours every year, year in and year out. Describe some of the technical aspects of the engine for me. Well, uh, so primarily, aside from it being a force probe, it's fuel injected, CDI ignition, obviously, it's got an ECU, water cooled. Uh, the reduction drive on here is a very, very simple setup, very low maintenance. The engine comes with a clutch. Okay, all right, clutch. Yep. So we're uh, we're idling around the same speed as we do with the two strokes, around 1,800, 2,000. Okay. Uh, max RPM on this is 9,200. <coughs> Okay. Quite a bit higher. Uh, fuel consumption is around 1.2 gallons an hour. Uh, <coughs> burning regular auto fuel, naturally not mixing any oil. Okay. The, uh, the way the engine comes, as far as when it's in the crate, the only thing you're doing aside from adding a prop to it is installing the exhaust okay. for the most part. The exhaust is pre welded, all the bracketry is done. Uh, very simple installation. There's not really a whole lot of installation instructions as far as the nuts and bolts are concerned because 90% of it's already done. Whenever you get this engine, it's almost turned key out of the box, wow. which makes it nice. Uh, you're not fabricating anything to make this engine work for this application. Our engine mount that we have here, as you can see, it's a very simple six-point mount where the engine has its shock mount already installed. You almost cannot feel this engine running when you're sitting in it. Is that right? It's, it's a very neat sounding engine as well. Really impressed. The exhaust system they're using on here, they've adapted from the uh, enduro bike world in, in Europe, okay. where they have noise restrictions on all that oh, stuff. Oh yeah, true, yeah, it's coming out of, the engine's coming out of Italy, you said, the base engine. That's and correct. a lot of noise restrictions in Europe, so yeah, engines run much quieter there than we're used to here in the U.S. Yeah, big time, big time. Uh, the, the little starter that this thing uses needs almost no battery whatsoever. I mean, we're, we're just using a tiny little battery to start. It maybe weighs a pound, the little oh, wow. lithium battery that we're using for it. The little engine uh, instruments uh, mounting package that we have up here, right up here. very, very simple. Yeah. Tack and water temp. That's it. That's what you need to know. That's it. Everything else is monitored by the ECU. If there's an issue, it, it has a, a lift mode that it goes in. It's so far so good with everything that we've seen. So, yeah. It's, it's a very, very bulletproof engine from what we have seen so far. Well, guys, he's got one, of, he's got a Quicksilver, he's got this exact airframe, and let's assume the airframe's in great shape and all the rest of that, and he goes, you know what, uh, I'm just done with two-stroke, or my, my old engine has run out, or whatever the situation is. Can you buy the engine from you and just put it on there, you know, from here back, you're supplying them everything. So, right now, this, this is the, the very first one, that we call the prototype. Okay. So, we're trying to keep the cost of this engine mount package under nine thousand dollars. Okay, I was going to ask you the price for that. Turn key, everything you need. But that's all that's the everything. The brackets and all. Everything. Okay. So it's the instruments, the additional plumbing for the fuel tank, battery box, all. Oh, including all of that. All. Of it. So really, it's uh, for nine grand or thereabouts. Uh, it's pretty much a replacement product uh, for the for a four four seven that you might have had on there before, or some other engine that you had on there before. The only, the only additional things that need to be done to the airframe in order to utilize this, obviously we have one additional hole we're going to be filling. We have to drill two holes in the down tube with the sleeve. And we also have a different aft elevator push uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. to accommodate the lower drop. Oh yeah, okay. So how, what's the size prop on this? I didn't ask you that. This is a 68 inch diameter. 68, okay. Gosh, with 40 horsepower and that big prop, and already been, you know, it's a light airplane, it's a 103 airplane. I'm thinking this is going to just go like a bat. Yeah. And maybe not in forward speed, but it's going to climb like crazy. Well, whenever we do our initial testing, we're definitely going to have a vertical speed indicator hooked up just to verify. Absolutely. Well, great stuff, Ken. Uh, where can we go to or send people to, on the web to have them inquire further about this or any of the Quicksilver products? You're selling all the Quicksilver products except GT500. That's correct. And you are the guys about that stuff now. So first of all, if you're interested in Quicksilver, well, we already know the right guys. But now the engine as well. Where do we find all that on the website? That's air-techinc.com. Okay. A-I-R-T-E-C-H-I-N-C.com. Okay, very good. You can find more about these. I've followed them for many, many years, flown all these airplanes. I've not flown that engine, though. I look forward to that one day. All that and lots of other affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Ken Bourne and myself here at Sun and Fun.